This is I'm Stuck, and in this video we will be looking at the Greek Civil War, which had many impacts on the Cold War. So first of all, in 1944, as a prelude to the Greek Civil War, in December there was the Battle of Athens. And the Nazis had previously had occupation of the area, but they were driven out by the resistance fighters of the National Liberation Front. Now this was mainly controlled by the Communist Party of Greece, and not the government in exile. And the communist supporters who had driven out these Nazis wanted to transform Greece into a republic which disliked any right-wing groups and had ambitions to bring back the monarchy. So when the last German soldiers left, Winston Churchill sent British troops to Athens to secure the city and allow the government in exile to return. Now he did this due to the, his concern of the number of communists in the country. And despite the initial happiness regarding the British arrival, by December the communists who believed that they were the main liberators had been put aside by the new British provisional government. Um, now the guerrilla forces in the country were also disarmed, which led to a lot of dissatisfaction. And this dissatisfaction led to a left-wing protest on December the 3rd, where 28 people were killed. And this led to four weeks of fighting where British troops had collaborated with right wing and even Nazi sympathisers against the communists. Now you have to remember that this was still going on as the World War II was going on so it was very weird to see um, t t essentially the British were fighting against the people who were on the same side as them. So in an attempt to stop the conflict, Winston Churchill personally arrived in Athens on Christmas Day. However, the conference was abandoned after the security risks at the area. And in January 1945, however, the Battle of Athens did end with British success. But the Civil War started again in 1946 and the lacklustre British troops announced that they could no longer afford intervention to keep Greece as a um, capitalist country. And uh, this was because of the World War, the economic draining that the World War, World War II had had on them. So as a result, the US started to offer military and economic aid towards the country due to fears that a Soviet takeover would give them a foothold in the Mediterranean. Nevertheless, Stalin did not offer any aid toward the Greek communists, and there was a number of reasons why this may be. Now, one of them where he saw it, he may have saw it unlikely to succeed. He may have been unsympathetic towards communist revolutions in independent states because he couldn't guarantee Moscow's control when Moscow's control was more important to him than a country turning communist. And it may be because he was honouring the percentages agreement made with Churchill. However, part of me doubts that, seeing as he didn't honour any of the agreements he made at Yalta. So the support that the Greek communists did receive was actually from Marshal Joseph Tito of Yugoslavia, which significantly aggravated Stalin and ended up with their fallout. Um, but by 1949, the US support had facilitated the Greeks' um, government's victory over the communists, and in 1952, they joined NATO with Turkey. So a success for the Americans, however, obviously it did come with loss of life, and um, it was a turning point which meant that they had to start intervening with other countries, which we will see later in places like Korea and Vietnam, which were very costly. So thank you very much for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.